Hey horror fans, welcome back to Room 237. Coming at you with kind of a random review because it's not Hitchcock. It's not a film I own. It's one I came across on Hulu because my last review was Paranormal Activity 2, which I ranted on. Just scroll through Hulu and I came across some films. And this is one that I've wanted to see for years and just never got around to it. <clears throat> and that is, it. it's from a director whose work I respect. Can't really talk about him as a person, but that is The Tenant from 1976. Directed by and starring Roman Polanski. Now, before I continue with the review, I will say, also written by Polanski, <clears throat> um, I'm going to say, I don't condone what he did back in the 70s or since. Uh, rape allegations towards a minor. Actually, I think it was even more than allegation. I think it was going to be a full-on conviction. And he fled the country. He has a set foot on our soil since I think it was 75 or 76. Um, I, I can't condone the man for what he did. But, and if you don't support Roman Polanski, you don't have to watch the review. I'm fine with that. You know, there are people who won't watch his films because they won't support him. That I get. I totally understand that. But, <clears throat> You know, I I do think he has made some great films. Some very influential films. Uh, Rosemary's Baby is probably my top 15 favorite films of all time. I love Rosemary's Baby. Uh, Chinatown I saw in a film class. Great uh, neo-noir film. I, I, I can't stress enough that I don't support him as a person. But I can't ignore his influence and his his art. If that offends anybody, I apologize. You don't have to watch this review. But, you know, I've always been interested in his films. And that's all, that's all I'm supporting is just his work. Come to think of it, he's even had Oscar winning films in, in the last... You know, since the 2000s. So, I don't know where I was going with that. But anyway. So, yeah. Uh, the Tenant is from 1976. It's based on film of the same... The French novel of the same name by... Uh, Roland Tapor. Also stars uh, Isabel Ajani, who is in uh, The Possession from 1981 with Sam Neill. Strange movie, but good. She was in the 79 remake, Nosferatu, which is really good. So she's been in some good horror, psychological horror films. And this is the last film in what Polanski called his apartment trilogy. That started with Repulsion, which I really want to see. Rosemary's Baby, and then this. And yeah, it takes place in France. It it's actually a French film because seventy six. I think seventy five was all his legal issues. So yeah, this was I think the start to his career outside of America. And I'm not gonna sit here and defend the stuff he went through in his life. Yes, he went through. I believe it was the Krakow Ghetto at the concentration camp. Um, which, if that's so, I think he was one of the Schindler Jews, but I could be wrong on that. He went through the Holocaust. His wife was Sharon Tate, who was pregnant with his baby, uh, who was murdered by the Manson family. You know, and some of his films do reflect that. I mean, this film opens up with very World War II kind of music. 
with that sort of accordion sound. Um, of course, the score changes as it goes on. It gets this very, almost like this midsummer kind of like violin screech kind of score. But anyway, Polanski plays this guy, uh, Tchaikovsky, who's kind of an everyman. He's just this quiet, shy, keeps to himself kind of guy. He rents this apartment in this building where the the previous tenant, this woman named Simone, uh, committed suicide or tried to commit suicide by jumping out the window through this glass below. And right off we see that the landlord is kind of a, you know, a stiff asshole. There's these rules, you know, can't have women over, can't make too much noise. Uh, he, for whatever reason, he goes to the hospital to visit Simone. Full body cast except for, except for one eye and her mouth. She has teeth missing. And that's where he meets this friend of Simone's, Stella, played by Isabella Johnny. They kind of start a uh, relationship. And from there, it's this character study of where he's pretty much driven insane by the obsession that, you know, the the landlords and his neighbors are trying to drive him insane, trying to turn him into Simone and drive him to kill himself. And it's pretty much his descent into madness. Uh... So kind of got a little bit elements of, it's kind of like if you take Rosemary's Baby and The Shining, you kind of get that vibe. Because it does have the Rosemary's Baby sort of dread, paranoia, sort of nowhere to go, like everyone's after you. And The Shining, because it is sort of confined to this one sort of um, living locale and I have to say I, I really enjoyed this movie it it is a 1970s slow burn psychological thriller that it is more character and story driven rather than all out scares or you know blood and gore or whatever you know it's more like, what were other ones in, like, the 70s? I mean, Rosemary's Baby was 68, but... Or something like the... More like the Omen rather than The Exorcist. You know, like, if, if this was, like, a, a movie about the devil, it would be more like The Omen than The Exorcist. It's more story, more of, like, a gradual build-up, which The Exorcist is as well. <clears throat> but, I mean, it starts off kind of slow. Like, he just... He has these images, like, when he looks out his window, because he doesn't have a bathroom, there's, like, a bathroom area, which, for some reason, he could see right into their windows. And he just sees the neighbors just standing motionless at the window, staring up at him. It's kind of like the cat people. And the way that's filmed is very creepy. And, you know... Whenever the neighbors are near him, he just has these visions that they're trying to attack him. Like, sort of getting the same images that, like, Simone probably would have had. He finds a hole in the wall that has teeth in it, or a tooth in it. He finds a dress that belonged to Simone. He wakes up, he's got makeup on. And just as the film goes on, he just descends deeper and deeper. Just these dreams, or nightmares, these nightmares, these hallucinations of just everyone trying to come after him, trying to drive him insane, pretty much make him Simone. I know, I'm stuffy. He goes down to this diner, sits in the same spot, that Simone sat at. And it's like. 
they're trying to sell him the same hot chocolate and cigarettes that Simone would order because they conveniently never have the coffee and cigarettes that he likes. It just is little things like that at first that just really make him think everyone is trying to make him Simone and drive him to kill himself. And there's even parts later on in the film where I actually <laughs> probably shouldn't have laughed at, but I did because I was kind of surprised it happened. He's sitting down at the park, and he sees this kid, this young child, crying. And there's all these other kids that have, like, sailboats in the huge fountain with, like, sticks to guide them. And this woman walks up to him asks him what's wrong and he says you know I lost my boat it's, it's the red one she's like I'll see if I can get it and the kid's still crying and he just like hands and coat pocket just walks up to the kid kid looks up at him he says you filthy little bastard and just slaps the fuck out of him I was just like holy shit I don't know why <clears throat> um and the scenes where he's in full wig, dress, and makeup. One, he kind of looks like Terry Jones <laughs> from um, um, Monty Python. May he rest in peace. He died recently. I did a video on him, a tribute. Specifically, one of his characters in uh, The Meaning of Life. But that's besides the point. And... You know, his landlords give him shit, which one of his landlords, the woman, is played by Shelley Winters, who I recognized from uh, Roseanne, because I used to watch that growing up. Uh, you know, they're saying, we know you had a woman over last night. You know, you, you do it again, you're kicked out. And he got shit because he had... He had a housewarming party and all his friends were being loud and all his neighbors were giving him shit. So he's already on thin ice. But they don't realize that the woman they saw was actually him in drag. And when he's in drag, it's like that's when full Simone takes over. Like there's just this creepy shot, the way it's done. He just dresses up like her, sits in a chair in the middle of his dark apartment and just stares out the window. But, like, he, he does this thing where he, and there's also, like, a, a little bit of Psycho in there. It's like Rosemary's Baby, Psycho, The Shining. All movies I love. All the favorites of mine. Especially Shining and Psycho, my first and third favorite films. Where he, like, he kind of, you know, like, bats his eyes and kind of talks like a woman. Like, she completely takes over. And then just when he's, like, in full gonzo mode, he gets this... Or even when he looks across the way into the bathrooms, he sees, like, Simone in bandages, undoing her bandages, and she's got, like, this creepy grin staring up at him. <clears throat> he sees this head in slow-mo coming up, like, through his window, then down again. Like, his neighbors are playing football with his head in the wig. And then, like, they all, like, look up at him and pointing to him. And, like, they're all rushing up. It, it's a nightmare or a vision. And, <clears throat> you know, he races out to Stella's home. And right when they profess their love for each other, even though, like... They, they go to see a Bruce Lee film, uh, uh, Enter the Dragon, I believe it was, when they first meet. And they're like fondling each other and kissing, but it's like someone was watching them, so it's like cut off. But it doesn't, you know, you kind of buy her attraction to him, but not so much the other way around. I, I don't really know how to explain it. Like, he... I, I kind of got Taxi Driver from this, too. Because he, he is that kind of character. He is that kind of 
socially inept, troubled kind of person. Oh, wait, he's not the tragic anti-hero that Travis was, the taxi driver. But, um, she leaves to go to work and he just trashes her apartment. He, he even starts talking to himself, like, like, oh, you're, you're gonna come after me. You, 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 you want me to be her? Takes a wad of cash and just goes on a tear throughout the night. I, I mean, he steps in front of a car, he gets hit, this old couple who he sees as his landlords. So he's all freaked out, he's drugged up from the doctor. And I mean, it all leads up to when he comes home. Yeah. I really gotta get the hang of saying spoilers at the beginning of these. But, uh, I do want to say like because one Roman Polanski does do a good job at getting these nightmare visions like in Rosemary's Baby the devil rape scene when you know the the son of the devil is conceived that that is like really trippy in like a kind of with this is kind of weird way the tenant is more of just like a eerie, kind of like the bear suit in uh, The Shining, but more slow motion. Just that kind of eerie, like creepy vibe. Like when he sees the neighbors making faces at him, or he sees the he his head being used to play football. Or when you see him, like, dressing up, full wig and dress, and just there's, the way it's shot, there's no, like, lighting in the room. It's just him in the mirror and just blackness. Kind of David Lynch as well. Kind of reminded me of, like, early David Lynch. And it all leads up to him jumping out the window. But, of course, he lives, and... He doesn't see his neighbors and his landlords trying to help him. He sees them trying to harass and hurt him more. He climbs all the way up to his window and jumps again. <laughs> and then that's when we get the final. And I think that's sort of remnant because he's like talking to himself the whole way up the stairs. Like, you know, you. You think you got me? You, 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 you gonna make me some... Like, just completely gone. It's sort of... I mean, I would relate it to... Whether it be... Jack Torrance in The Shining when he's in the hedge maze and he's just babbling gibberish. Or Taxi Driver when his mind is just so gone and he's lost so much blood that he's just gone of course he lives and I guess the ending is open to interpretation as to whether it's really happening or it's what he sees it's his dying vision but he's he's in the hospital in the same bed as Simone same full body cast except for his eye and mouth which, one morning when he woke up with makeup in the wig, he had no memory of doing that. And he found that two of his front teeth were missing and put in the hole that he found her teeth in. And he sees Stella and himself having the same exchange that we saw earlier in the film. Like, he... He's seeing it through Simone's perspective now. It lets out the same, you know, blood-curdling scream. I guess that's, I think that was purposely left open-ended. It's like, okay, did he die? And that's his dying vision. Is, you know, is that really happening? Has Simone completely taken over? Which would mean, in 
in his mind that enemies won. Um, I don't really know. Uh, feel free to tell tell me what you think. But uh, yeah, I I really enjoyed this movie. Like, this is the kind of psychological thrillers that I really enjoy. The seventies slow burn kind of character studies, but you know, kind of like you know Taxi Driver, but more horror than crime. Or noir, that's what Taxi Driver really is. And, you know, it's it is a slow burn, but when the horror elements are there, yeah, they're not jump scares. They're not bloody and gory, or really like monsters, but they're done in just an eerie like this was done with slow motion lighting and music, and him dressing up in drag. Which, I don't think since Psycho had really been done, or at least to this level, like full makeup and everything, outside Monty Python. <laughs> but, uh, and again, I don't support Roman Polanski as far as what he did. <clears throat> I, I can only... You know, I, I do enjoy and respect his films, especially his older ones. I, I haven't seen any newer stuff. I, I really want to see a Repulsion. I heard that was really good. But, um, you know, I, I do kind of have to give credit where it's due. You know, I, I do really enjoy his films, and, you know, I, just, I. I can't stress enough, I don't support the man, I support his art. So, if this offends you, again, I apologize. I'm not trying to say he's a good guy or anything like that, or give the guy a chance. I'm not saying that either. I'm not saying you're wrong for feeling offended. I mean, if you are, I totally get it. But, um, there's actually a shit that's not what I wanted there's actually a great video I just watched by um, uh, I've subscribed to her but I can't remember her name if, if this fucking thing would just load I think I have too many windows open on it um uh this one yeah uh, deep focus lens uh, she did a great video on um, can bad people make good art and her her case in point was Robin Polanski definitely go check out that video it's very insightful and she could say better what I'm trying to say. But yeah, again, if you're offended by Polanski or someone speaking positive about him in any way, even his films, I get it. And I apologize in advance. I I can't help but like the films that I like. Hell, I... Oh. But, you know, the, the Tenant I really enjoyed... Um, you know, I, I love these kind of slow burn character study psychological thrillers. I would say I like the story more than Rosemary's Baby, but I think that's done better as a film. And I do hold Rosemary's Baby in higher regard. I really need to see Repulsion. But uh, yeah, that is my review for The Tenant. And, you know, I, I mean... I, I do expect to see some comments about Polanski, but uh, if you have interpretations of the ending or what you thought of the tenant, feel free to let me know, and thank you for watching.